again to another exciting episode of Dancing with the Baron. Of course, it's just the second one, but it's going to get more and more exciting every single time. All right, so the first class we talked about the structure and the timeline. Uh, that was done to give you a basic understanding of the uh, documented information that we do know and how much it has progressed. And as I, as I also said, the information prior to uh, the 12th century, we really have no documentation on. So that's a big question mark. But we're going to be now talking about some of the steps. This is going to be one in probably two or three different classes on steps. No matter how many times I try and figure out the best way to do this, there really is no one simple baseline. Like I instructed before, they uh, brought down into music, dance, and culture, and uh, geography. All made things happen, and then put it into the timeline. So I'll be doing the same thing with steps. Okay. So right now, we're just going to start talking about the low-level dances. The uh, estampes the Basa, the Pavans, the Almonds. Nice, slow, simple steps before we start getting into the energetic stuff. Now, I'm going to also change some of the information around. At the end of this video, I'm going to put down four links of some really good places where you can go and find some already documentation that's already been established. When you look at those, you're going to see, oh, wow, this one, hey, it's easy, it's basic, I can understand. And this other one is like, wow, it's the same dance. But instead of just 16 lines, it has 52 lines of information. So as you can see, there's a lot of information. What I'm also trying to explain to you is that there's also many different versions of the same dance. Okay? A simple one, and I'm going to talk about uh, this at the end, is Rufty Tufty. I know of three different versions of it. It's not a big dance, but there's still three different versions that I've danced with it. Most of it is the same steps, slightly different variants. So you're going to get a whole bunch of different versions, and that's fine. When you go to a different kingdom, or if you go later period, or if you go to the... Uh, I think it's the Toronto uh, English Country Dance Academy. They have different versions of it. So it's not wrong. It's just different. So we're going to add that in today. So I'm going to first talk about some of the basic dance steps. Then I'm going to put it into the dance structure. And then we're going to do a couple different versions of it. And then at the end, I'm going to give you a, a, an example of a dance. If they say the dance many times for many years, it's like, we're going to do this dance. I'm like, great. Now, tell me how does it start again? A lot of it is the same. Some of it is slightly different. So I'm going to give you tricks on how to remember certain dances and go, okay, is that uh, how many couples? Is it in a line? Uh, what's the thing? So, like I said, at the very end, I'm going to show you a tidbit on how to remember some of this. So let's get started right now. What we're going to do is I'm going to separate the board into two halves, okay? So, what we're first going to talk about is we're going to talk about the structure of the dance, okay? Now, there are three main things, and then I'm going to add a fourth that's going to be part of the reason you're going to get, a, get different variances, okay? So the first part is pretty much always going to be an introduction, okay? That's going to be the initial set of uh, dance steps. That's going to tell you if, whether it's an almond or it's a pavon whether it's a saltarello, anything like that. So the intro is essentially telling you the type of dance. 
then you're going to have what I call set of steps. Now this is where you put the groups of steps together and sometimes it's going to be part of the dance and what I mean by that is the main body which is the chorus Now everyone knows part of the reason for having a chorus is it's the same thing that's just repeated. So we're going to do this set of dance steps and then we're going to do the chorus. Then we're going to do another set of dance steps and then the chorus. Now sometimes you're going to have multiple choruses. So it's going to be this and this, do this and then chorus and chorus because sometimes the dances get bigger and longer and that's fine. So, this is how we're going to break it up. So the first one we're going to do, which is going to be some of the easiest dance steps, is going to be <clears throat> what's known as singles or simples, okay? Now, the way the dance steps usually go, you're going to go either two, a four, or eight counts. So that's going to be one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now sometimes you're going to get three with a different aspect to it, like a pause or a variance or a vow or, or a reverence, that type of thing. So it's going to be three steps and an action, okay? So let's talk about the simple, okay? The simple step is just two steps. Now, I'm gonna start over here and I'm gonna make one gigantic letter. That's a horrible circle, all right? I'm gonna try that again. In fact, I'm not even gonna put a circle on it, it was just too horrible. L, what does that mean? you always start with your left foot. Now there's some dances, not many, that you'll start with the right. But just start everything on your left and you're going to remember almost all the dances. So uh, what do I always, always left. Someone has a question, always left. Well, if I do this move, it's left. Everything is left. So the first thing is left. So a simple, is a left step and then together. So you're going to take, let's put some different colors on here to make it a little easier. We'll go green and red. Why? Because it's Christmassy. And it's the most contrasting colors we got. So, uh, right foot will be red, left foot will be green. Just right and red. That's all. Make it easy. So, you're going to go with your left foot. Bad example of the left foot. Right foot. So, you'll take a step forward. That's one. Take your right foot forward. Bring it together, that's two. That's it. You're not gonna see my feet, but all it is is one step and then together. As you can see, they are together. So I'm gonna start adding dance nomenclatures to make it easy, all right? We're going to put down Do not have enough hands for the dry erase markers. And black is the hardest for some reason. So this, we are going to write left foot, because we're doing everything in feet, so it's gonna be left foot. And then, right above it, we're gonna put down capital T, small o, which means together. 
Now, when you do the next set of steps, if you do what's known as uh, two simples, you go left together, and then the next is going to be right together. So the next one is going to be right as your first step. Left as your second. Here it's going to be right together. All right. This is one simple, and this is when you do two of them, it's two simples. When you always put your feet together, it's a simple step because you've completed the step. Now, we're going to do what is known as a double, okay? Now, the double, let me erase some of this. So with this one, it was just two steps. Okay, now for this one, we're going to go left. Then we're going to go, that was your first step. Right, that's your second step. left, together. That is your fourth step. So again, you end with the feet together. But this one is just a straight step. So you go left, you never stop. You go three steps and you put your feet together for the fourth. So, you can write this one, left, right, left, together. That's a double. Now, I'm going to start showing you a couple different variations of this, okay? Now, this is just simply what's known as a pavan step, okay? Left together, right together, left, right, left together. That's a pavan step. So this set right here, when you put them all together, that is your pavan, okay? When you do that, that is your intro. And you can do this one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six. You can do it for the entire dance. You're just marching, going around. Now, when you do this, and this is where I'm going to start showing some of the variations on it. The movement aspect to it. You can go and do every single movement in one direction. That's great. Or you can go left together, right together, left, right, left together, and then since you ended with this, you would start again with right together, left together, right, left, right together. 
It's a continuous marching this way, this way, to stay in a straight line. Now, you can move in different forms. Say after this part right here, you did essentially this is two, this is two, this is four, this is two, two, four again. But in this time, you went eight this way. So all these together is an eight, and all these together is an eight. You can now go backwards. So you go right backwards, right foot together, left foot together, right, left, right, together. So you can go in a straight line. You can go forward and backwards. You can go and do a slight curve. So you can go like in a big circle around a huge audience. You can also do a turn, a 90 degree turn. Now, how do you do that? Essentially, one person goes forward and the other person will go back. So all of a sudden you're slowly doing a turn this way and this person slowly backing up this way. And now you can go that way. So you can go forward the entire time. You can go forward and back. You can go forward and turn, or you can go in a complete circle. Those are the four major movements on the pavan. And it's just these exact same steps. But those are the different variants. You got four different ver versions or variants of this exact same dance. Forward, forward, back. Forward and back to make the turn or just go straight, but you do it in a circle. This is why just telling you the dance steps alone was not gonna cut it for me, because there's way too many versions. Because you can go, okay, I got it. And then as soon as you try doing a dance, and they're gonna say, okay, you do this, and you go forward and back. Whoa, 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 I thought it was just all forward. It's not. Each dance is done differently, and each kingdom does it differently. Every different group sometimes have a diff has different variants on it. So I needed to tell you, these are the stamp. Uh, these are the steps, and these are the different versions that you can do. And it's not hard. It just takes a little practice on doing it. Okay. So we did the pavan steps first. Why? because it really is the easiest. <laughs> now, why do I say that? Because it's just simple marching. Left, together, or left, right, left, right. It's just a march. It really is the most simple. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna jump to the Almond, okay? Now, an Almond is essentially Always four steps, okay? We always start with the left, right? So, we will go This is just a left step It's a four thing, it's a four movement step. But here's the interesting thing. You got one, two, three, just pretty much like the first four steps of the Pavan. Now on the last one is where you do a flare or a flourish. Okay, I'm gonna add this down over here. That's how you spell flourish. 
since it's just a different version of the four-step pavan, at the very end is where you add a flourish. Okay, Like I said, that's going to be where you do something different. The standard is either going to be what's known as a pause, which means you bring your leg and then you stop for a count, and then you start all over again by starting with the right foot. So you go right, left, right. Exact same thing as the pavan if you do doubles. So it's nothing but doubles or straight three steps with a flourish. Now, some of the things you can do is, for this one, you can And this is not a step, okay? You can point your foot. You can pause your foot up in the air. Uh, let's see, some of the others I put down on here. All right, you can do a kick. So when you're doing that, you can do like a little small little kick in the air with you can either do with your knee or your foot okay you can also do a hop so when you go there you bring it up you can actually hop so your right foot is in the air and you hop on the left foot so just for the ones that I've drawn right here, there are five different variances. There's other ones where it's called a knee lift uh, calf. Calf rub. It's where essentially where when, when you bring it up, you actually just bring your foot and you hit your left leg on the calf and then you go back down. You can also do a curve, okay? Now, this can be done during this entire movement, okay? What do I mean by that, okay? What that means is instead of just doing a straight step, what you're doing is, is you're doing like a little circle. So from here, you go here and then do this. And then right does this, to this, and from this to that, okay? Well, look at that. You have now gotten seven different versions or variances of just the simple step. I'm not trying to confuse you. What I'm saying is for the steps themselves they're just basic steps but when you add different things to them and you're going to see some people are just going to go out there and just going to go i am just doing what i'm supposed to do. i'm just doing what i'm supposed to do. and that's fine but then they're the ones that are like oh i came up with this really new thing and it's going to be i'm going to call it version nine and that's called hacky sack where they're going to go in there and they're going to go and do like they're pretending hacky sack Hey, if you got a happy sack and it works, that's great. If you're very flexible, hey, that's great. Other people will be looking going, I'm not doing that. But person's doing it is like, everyone is looking at me. It is the most glorious move ever. And that's fine. That's the whole purpose of this. Because you're not wrong. There is nothing that says they actually didn't create like a happy sack move way back then. It was just called something else besides happy sack. But that's why it's hard to just say these are the steps. Because you can, but they're not. If they are, they're just boring. But when you got later on, you got full gowns and everything like that. If you're just doing steps, no one can really see your legs sometimes under, under the gowns. But if you want to go and do a little kick, so all of a sudden your foot and ankle is coming out from underneath your dress, and you turn your leg 90 degrees when you're doing it, people are like, oh, wow, 
this person must have been taught by a dance master or something to the point that they're doing something different. There's nothing wrong with it. You're here to have fun and try different things. So, this is an Almond step. And again, you can go forwards, you can go backwards, you can go in circles, exact same things again. Most of the time, they're going to be mostly forward and back, not a lot of other ones. But remember, the reason that you have circles or you have uh, 90 degree turns is the area that you're dancing might not be big enough. So, or you got, we have 20 people dancing in a small area. So you have at that point, one group of people dancing this way and another group of people dancing that way because, well, we'll put another group right here because you need, that's big enough to get everyone in. And as long as no one hit each other, everything is fine. So everyone is not always facing the same way either. You need to create a dance dance a dance in the area that best is suited for your abilities. All right, so this was the Almond. I go usually step, step, point, and I just essentially tap my foot on the ground, and then I lift up and go right, left, right, point. Exact same thing. Many different ways to spell the same things. All right. So we're going to also put over here some of the flares and flourishes. Now we're just going to be putting down some of the stuff for feet. But there's stuff you can do with hands, shoulders. You can do something with your eyes where you're going like this and all of a sudden you're playing crazy eyebrow with the other person. It's supposed to be fun. So. Point, pause, kick, hop. Uh, we're going to do skip or like a shuffle, essentially changing steps. So you bring your foot behind the other one. And I'll show you that real quick. So I'll show you that one right here. After I get rid of this, though, I'm going to show you how to write this dance. Now, the way that, like I said, I write the dances the way that it helps me best to understand. So for this one, it would be left, right, left, and point. Capital P, small t. And that's when I point my, point my right foot. Now, if I wanted to pause, I could change it to a PS. If I wanted to do a kick, I could do a K or a CK, whichever way that you want to do it, that's great. Like I said, I'm going to be creating a new series that helps me understand to help teach. And these are the things that I'm going to use. But like I said, I will provide some additional literature and uh, locations for you to look at to see what works out best for you. Same thing, if you want to do a hop, you can just do that. If you want to do a shuffle, uh, SH. Do things differently. If you're like, okay, I'm doing this, I've done this dance for six years, the same way, I'm getting kind of bored with it. Like I said before, in the triangle, culture and geography change things. Oh, you know what, we've been doing the same thing, or hey, this is from England, we're French, we're gonna call it something different, and we're going to do the hacky sack move instead of pointing with our foot. That's the whole point. Change it up. Do something different. Make it new and exciting and make it yours. I don't know how.
how many times I have danced and I've had people go, that looked so stupid. And I had other people come up going, oh my God, that looked like the funnest thing in the world. You're dancing for yourself. So make every dance, every dance move yours. Okay? So this is how you can write the dance, at least for me, to make it really easy to understand. Then you wrote something else, but I forgot. So I will go to the next thing. All right, so pavans, which is the easiest, and then almonds, which carries over a lot of the major double move from the pavan straight into the almond with some different and more flourishes added on. Okay, now we're going to do a thing called a set, or correction, we're not going to do set, we're going to do a, a bronzel or a brawl first. Okay? Now, it comes from France. It's all about going to your side. So we have done these two, which is forward and back. Now we're going to talk left and right. Okay? Like I said, I try to make this as easy as possible. <laughs> So, a bronzel or a brawl. Starting to the left again, as always, you're going to go and do a left. Now, that's actually right for me. So, you're going to do a left, and like we did before, you can do a left, a left, and then a right, and a right. Or you can go left, 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 eight counts, and then go right, 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 eight counts. Two, four, eight. Exact same types of moves. Okay? Now let's draw it. Left foot, right foot. Now, how does this go? You go left foot over. That's one. Right foot over, two. A simple, a simple is two steps. A double is four. One, two. Exact same thing here. Left together. Now, one of the things you can you can add, hey, that looks exactly like the same thing as the Pavon and the Almond. Oh no, how are we going to tell the difference? It's not rocket science, people. For the pavon, if it's left together, just put an arrow in front of it saying it's a forward or back. Now, if we have a forward and back, or a straight forward, or we got a left and a right, what does that mean? Let's put in a cl the, the, the classifications of what type of dance it is. These are going to be linear dances, or line dances. This is going to be circular dances. Not rocket science. If you go left or right, it's going to be done in a circle. Sometimes there will be some variance again. Not many, but at which point it's going to be in circle, all right, bronzel or around means left and right. So if you hear a dance that's a bronzel or something, uh, soldiers round, you know it's a circle. Everything that's there, like I said, 
you're going to start developing certain ways of identifying a dance just like that. Okay? So, we have a left together. Now we do uh, two simples, okay? It's going to be left together, left together. Now, if we had to do it again, this is how I would write it, okay? We're going to do left together twice. Left together, left together. There you go. Then you're going to do right together twice. There you go. You now have a double. So if you put these two together, it's a double. It's four steps. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? Okay, let me re-clarify that again. Left together, left together. One, two, three, four is a double. This one is a double. All together, it's an eight. So... full eight counts. Now, you can also do the same thing, like I said, on two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all in the same direction. Okay? Go eight counts, and then you reverse and go the opposite way, eight counts. Now, how do you do that? That would be, you wouldn't go together because it's one, two, three, four. You want to do essentially almost a skip or a hop or a shuffle. Okay? So at that point, you can go left, let's say we're going to use a shuffle, it counts. Then you say, all right, on the right though, we are going to do a hop. For eight counts. So you go left and you shuffle, 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 and then right, you do a little hop by jumping, that type of thing. Like I said, this to me is the way, best way for me to understand and how I am instructing. So I'm giving you guys fair warning whenever you want to look at my stuff. Hopefully, I can make it as simple as possible. So that's a that's a bronzo. That's a brawl. You're going in a circle. Boom, boom, boom. That is the intro. Hopefully this is making a lot of sense. I'm trying to repeat myself a few times only on the key points that I'm trying to convey. So. Now, we're going to do the next thing, which is called a set and turn single, okay? Now, as we said, when you're doing one set of things, it's a simple or a single, but it's also, when you put two things together, it's called a set, okay? That means it's a set, which is two things, and a turn single. So you're doing one turn, single time, but you're doing two things. So, what that is, it's left the exact same thing. You go over here, one, two, that is one movement. From here,
we will go Left together, right together. The second one, that's the set. Left together, right together. Two simples, which makes a four count. And then you add, haven't used blue yet. Four count turn. That's the third thing, equaling eight, eight counts, and that is called a set and turn single. Yes, I'm writing sideways. Sorry about that. That's going to be one of the things that's going to be either part of your set of steps. So we're going to do set and turn single. Or it can actually be part of the chorus element. Usually if you do a set and turn single, it's going to be done quite often. But if it's not always in the same part of the dance, it might not be part of the chorus. Okay. So we're going to put set and turn single. That's one of the things. Okay? And yes, you can do a whole bunch of different versions of this. Okay? So for example, we're going to do uh, the right here. Instead of actually putting it down and putting it together. I didn't write it down, so let me write it down. This one is left together, right? But now, let's take a different version of it, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna do left, and we're gonna do right kick okay so what does that mean is instead of actually putting our foot together we're going to take a step to the left and then we're going to swing our leg past our right leg past our left and then we're going to go back and do the same thing that step right here i will redo it again later but that's called a saltarello step it's adding a flare, a, a flourish, onto an already established step. This works out really well if you're actually in a really confined spot. So instead of actually doing really big movements, all you need to do is do one step, kick, one step, kick, and you're moving just very slightly. The other one, you can do much bigger movements, everything like that. So like I said, you can have multiple different versions of this, all right? Again, sorry, hopefully I am not confusing you with a lot of this. I really am trying to make this as easy and simple to understand as possible and to write down so it's easier to remember and read next time. Okay, so we've got set and turn signals, sing, singles now for the other aspects of the chorus, okay? There's always usually going to be three parts to the chorus, okay? And put in a different color. That's going to be siding. 
army, and usually haze. Okay? Sighting is where you step off from your left and you go four small little steps to your shoulder to shoulder. So right shoulder, right shoulder, back four, left four small little steps, shoulder to shoulder, back four. When you do circle or army, you grab a hold of the hand, the wrist, the forearm. You can do what's known as palming, which is actually touching palms, being palms away. It's all part of the flares and flourishes that you want to do. You can also do what's known as cupping, and we'll get into all that stuff again later. But when you start doing army, you go and you do eight count circle. Then you go start to the right, so you're holding right hands, so right shoulders first, then left shoulders, then right arms first, and then left arm, and you just do a complete 360, stop, grab all the left, do 360, go back to start. Like I said, that's where the turn comes in. Like I said, sometimes set and turn signal single, you don't actually do the set. Sometimes you do the set and some other stuff. Like I said, each dance is different and different versions of the dance. But if it doesn't work out, you know what the dance is. You can add your own little flourishes and not screw up the dance. Someone else can be dancing something different and someone's like, I don't understand. No, nope, it's okay, he's still doing it. It's still right in time. She is now doing a special twirl that shows off her dress. I have seen that too, and that's excellent. When they do, instead of a, much, instead of a slow spin, they do two spins really fast to show off the nice embroidery or the color scheme, and that's fine. There is nothing that says they can't. As long as they don't screw up the dance and everyone's having fun, she is making her dance her own, and there's nothing wrong with that. Then haze. Haze is where you weave in and out, either amongst uh, all males, all females, or there's a big one called a grand hay, where you go male and female, and you go all the way in a big circle. There's so many of them. Like I said, we're not going to go into all of them right now. We're just trying to hit some of the basics and develop it into your understanding of how the dances become or the steps become a dance. And then, like I said, the third part are some of the different versions of it. And most of the time, the versions have to do with the flourishes that you add. Okay? Okay, so we did... The set and turn single, the Amon, the bronzel, set and turn single. Those are the main four. All right. So we'll add some more stuff later on when we do more of the set of steps. That is going to be really adding on when we do the specific dances. Okay. So right now we've kind of bookended. We got the intro to understand how the different dances are actually done, okay? Forward and back, left and right, very easy. The main chorus elements, so you got the sighting, arming, haze, and if you're not sure how that goes, saw, sighting, arming, haze. Pretty much that is always said. So, now, I'm going to end on the one note that I said. We'll try and give you a better understanding of a way to remember dances. Okay? So, I'm going to start off like this. I'm going to say the dance. And I want everyone who has danced before going, oh yeah, I remember it, or oh yeah, I danced the step, I danced it, I just don't remember it. And the ones that are like, yeah, I have no idea which one it is. All that is good. Now, after this, hopefully all of you will be like, oh, I know exactly. All right, so we're going to do Roughy tufty. All right. How many people?
people remember how to do the Rufty Tufty dance. Now, I'm going to show you how you can remember it so much easier. All right? The Rufty Tufty dance is a dance for two couples. Okay? It's also a dance that is done in a square. So we know it's a two couple dance. We know it's done in a square. The fact that we have a rough and a tough and a FTFT means that this is going to be a dance where the couples will dance together. Uh. And the partners, or pressure, or the opposite, will also dance together. So this is that great glorious dance where you go in together and back. This is also the one where you go in together and then you go out with your opposite. Turn around and then go back with your partner. Now, just in those basic aspects, does everyone pretty much know pretty much exactly the dance I'm talking about? Give you one more hint of another dance. Ra, ti, ta, ti, heart, sees. I don't know why they rhyme. Heart, sees is also another square dance with two couples that do a lot of the same type of things. Now, the difference between this one is that you have to deal with your heart, which is very fickle, and this is where you go, I like you, I hate you, I like you, I hate you. So you like your partner, you hate your partner. You like your opposite, you hate your opposite. <laughs> so the heart is fickle, so you always break off everyone, both your partner and your opposite. Okay? So, heart, C's, rough, D, tough, D, all square, very close to the same thing. When we actually start doing the dances, we'll show you and hope you'll be like, oh, totally get it now. All right, so we're going to end it on that note. Uh, I'll be doing the next class next week on dancing. We'll do some more of the steps again. It, like I said, it's a big process. I uh, hope everyone enjoys themselves. Uh, have a good weekend. And like I said, I'll add the reference material on the bottom. And please always, if you have questions or comments, please send them to me. I am very happy to look at them, answer questions. Or maybe I'll look at it and go, oh, I didn't even think of that. That's great. So. Thank you all very much and have a good night.